And it is for this reason that the nurse is constantly watching it, turning her face to right and left. Her eyes are fixed on the baby, giving it no chance to climb out of the cradle. The child now becomes drowsy and looks as if about to go to sleep. The nurse need not now watch as before. She just watches the cradle as it passes in front of her. That is enough. She need no longer watch it by turning her head to right and left. To do so would be a waste of energy. Likewise, when the breathing first becomes tranquil, when the body becomes calm. The practice enters a new phase more delicate and subtle than before, in which the meditator fixes his attention at one particular point. Not following the breath in and out, this change in technique is very advantageous and suitable. We have mentioned earlier that the track or path of the breathing can be divided into three regions, namely the nose tip, the middle of the chest, and the navel area. We must now consider the results of directing attention to each of these locations. Suppose we direct attention to the middle of the chest, this region is too large for it to be possible to fix on a limited point there. If attention is directed to the navel region, the mind will likewise wander. This is because, as in the case of the chest, the body sense can only delimit a large circular region and is not able to fix on a small area. The only place left is the nose tip, the small area where the breath passes in and out. Here the breathing can be clearly felt and easily concentrated on. IT is for this reason that the nose tip has been accepted as the best place on which to establish mindfulness in this part of the practice. The analogy of the gatekeeper helps to clarify this technique. A gatekeeper remains at the gate and does not leave it. He need not examine people who have not yet arrived at the gate, nor need he examine those who have already passed through and are now inside the town. He examines only the people actually passing through the gate, that is all he needs do. In this way he achieves the desired result without tiring himself or wasting his time. Similarly, the meditator at this stage in his practice must be mindful of the breathing at the nostril, or more precisely. At the inner side of the nose tipped, he should imagine that the flesh at that point is very tender, like a sensitive wound. So that even a very small movement of air can be clearly felt there, his mindfulness must be fixed at this single point, which, to anticipate, is known as the point of contact, Fusana, to be dealt with in detail below. For the average person this point can be located easily, and for anyone with a bent or hooked nose it is all the more easy to locate it. But a person with a turned up or flattened nose may find it rather difficult to feel the air at the nose tip because it strikes directly, and is felt at the upper lip rather than at the nose tip. I in such a case, the meditator should fix the point at the upper lip instead of the nose tip. It is something for each one to work out for himself. So mindfulness based on counting while following the whole course of the breathing becomes mindfulness based on counting while fixing. The mind at either of the two points just discussed, the technique of counting is changed as well. The meditator is advised to count by fives, saying 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, as each breath passes the contact point. Or he may count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. As for estimating without counting, this should be done by fixing the mind right at the contact point in order to be aware of whether the breath is passing in or out and whether the breaths are long or short, heavy or light, coarse or fine, and so on. Now in the technique of connecting, Anyabandana, the meditator follows the breath continuously like a shadow. This practice closely resembles stage 3, experiencing the whole body. Here too, mindfulness is established on normal breathing, but the practice is more refined. Accessory techniques are kept to a minimum. As long as mindfulness is established by means of counting or by observing beginning, middle, and end, the technique is still gross. The meditator observing the beginning, middle, and end of the breath unit perceives the breath as rising, falling, rising, falling. The applied thought or initial application, vitaka, that he uses to fix mindfulness is still coarse, agitated. It is directed not towards the breath unit as a whole, but towards its various phases. Now towards the beginning, now towards the middle, now towards the end, thus the mind is applied in a gross way. So the meditator now abandons this method and scrutinizes the breathing uninterruptedly. This uninterrupted scrutiny, whether carried out by following the whole breath unit or by fixing on the point of contact is more refined and subtle.
The cruder counting technique is now given up completely, from stage 3, experiencing the whole breath body, the practice has now progressed to the point where there is no more observing of beginning, middle, and end, even when mindfulness is fixed only at the point of contact, not following the course of the breath. The meditator can be said to be experiencing the whole bodily formation or the whole breathing process. He is then like the gatekeeper examining only as they enter or leave by the gate and disregarding their other movements. Limiting mindfulness to the single point of contact comes to the same thing as following the breathing in and out uninterruptedly. And it is in this sense that connection, the second step, is to be understood. The practitioner who wishes to progress easily must understand connection perfectly and practice it. The subtler the breathing and the technique of watching, the more refined the mind automatically becomes. Hence the techniques that the meditator uses for contemplating his breathing. Should be progressively more subtle and refined. The third step is contact, fusana. This step is to be steadied together with fixing. The fourth step, fixing means focusing the mind firmly and unswervingly at the point of contact. Obviously then, fixing and contact are closely related. In addition, they overlap with the second step of connecting. The word fusana may be taken as referring either to the point of contact or to the act of contacting or touching. In practice, the distinction is irrelevant since without the act of contacting, there can be no point of contact. In other words, if there is no concentration on the breathing, there is neither act of contacting nor point of contact. Concentration implies contact. I end stages 1, 2, and 3. The whole breath from beginning to end is observed. Though there is contact in those stages, the practice is not specifically concerned with it. In the early stages, the objective is to establish mindfulness on the breathing itself. The breathing, as preparatory object of concentration or preliminary sign, parakamanamitta, is relatively gross. In the technique based on contact, the mind is directed towards one particular point, the spot where the air touches the skin, and takes that as the sign for a more refined kind of practice. The meditator begins, therefore, to direct his whole attention to that point of contact and finally locates it at the nose tip. In this way the sign, or object of concentration, is changed from the flowing breath to the nose tip. The nose tip then becomes the basis for another new sign called the acquired sign, Agahanamitta, to be utilized in the higher stages. The meditator then has to develop this new sign uninterruptedly, I end the course of doing so he succeeds in surmounting various kinds of obstacles, details of which will be given later on. The step in which this new sign is firmly established is spoken of as fixing the panna. It culminates in the arising of the counterpart sign, Padabhaganamitta, and following on this counterpart sign comes absorption. Once again, let it be noted that contact and fixing are very closely related. In fact, it is not possible to draw a clear line between them. At whatever point mindfulness of breathing is established, contact is present, and there too is fixing, though it is not as yet recognized as such. When concentration on contact can be maintained at will, fixing is also established. In this step of fixing, there is concentration without concentrating, that is, concentration without conscious effort. In other words, the conscious effort of concentrating has ceased because the state of concentration has been fully attained. This can be compared to the process of grasping an object with the hand when the object has been grasped, then, although the hand is still holding it, the act of grasping is already accomplished. The object is in the state of having been grasped, while the hand, having finished actively grasping it, merely holds it firmly fixed. Here grasping corresponds to contact, and the state of hand holding firmly corresponds to fixing. Care is needed to distinguish between grasping the object and state of the objects having been grasped, that is, between contact and fixing. The nature of contact and fixing must be clearly perceived by the meditator. Once he has perceived this, he can proceed to a more subtle sign or object and thereby render the mind progressively calmer. So counting and connecting are based on the preparatory sign, Parakamanamitta, contact has to do with the acquired sign, Agahanamitta, comma. And fixing with the counterpart sign, Padabhaganamitta, we shall now consider these three kinds of sign in order the better to understand contact and fixing as well, the more refined techniques to follow.
The signs, so called, are of three kinds, I in the case of certain meditation objects, Kamana, not all three. Other signs appear, such meditation objects do not result in absorption, the others, in which all three signs normally appear, do lead to absorption. The sign of stage one is the preparatory sign, Parakamana Mina, the object that the meditator takes as his working ground for. Concentration in the preparatory stage, I in the case of Anapansati it is the ever-moving breath. The second sign is the acquired sign, Adahanamina, this sign is visualized, seen by the inner eye. Being a mental image, it is distinctly different from the sign taken as object in the preparatory stage. In Anapanasati this second sign is a white point or spot seen as a clear mental image at the point of contact, Fusana, that is, at the nose tip. The third or counterpart sign, Padibhaganamina, is also a mental image, being a modified form of the acquired sign, which had by this stage undergone various chances in form, features, color, size, and so on. The counterpart sign can be shifted about it will, the meditator can maintain it in any particular state he wishes, and having established it firmly in one particular state, can use it as the most subtle and lofty foundation and stronghold of the mind. When the mind has this sign as its foundation and is completely absorbed in it, it attains the state called absorption, jhana. To understand this phenomenon more easily we must compare Anapanasati with meditation practices based on objects having a clear-cut shape. In the practice of the Kajas, for instance, the meditator sets up a blue or red disc front of him and concentrates on it. In this case, the preparatory sign is the disc itself, concentrating on it is called preparatory or preliminary work, parakama. The preparatory work is completed when the meditator, after having concentrated on the sign continuously for some time, can see it clearly in his mind's eye, this new sign, seen with the inner eye as an image, is the acquired sign. It becomes in its turn the object of concentration. This makes clear the distinction between preparatory sign and acquired sign. The preparatory sign is the external device, the acquired sign the mental image created by concentrating on the preparatory sign. Having concentrated steadily on this internal acquired sign until he is able to see it satisfactorily in its original form. The meditator then develops the ability to control and change its form and size. For example, the red or blue disc generally used has a diameter of about 6 inches. This may be magnified by the mind of the meditator to the size of the sun or moon or reduced to a mere point, or it may be changed in some other way. Eventually, the features most suitable for concentration are developed and the sign is stabilized in that form. When firmly established, in this way the sign is said to be fixed or nailed. This is fixing, which will culminate in the attainment of absorption, and the sign that is so altered and stabilized is the counterpart sign. As another example, consider the practice of meditating on various kinds of loathsomeness, a subakamana. In contrast to the Kasia discs this kind of object is rather repulsive and tiresome. The meditator sits with a corpse of some kind in front of him and examines it closely, noting carefully all its features and characteristics. This corpse used as object of contemplation is the preparatory sign. The next step consists in acquiring a mental image of the corpse so that it can be seen with the eyes shut at least as clearly as with them open. This picture of the corpse, this mental image which can be seen with the eyes shut is the acquired sign. The meditator next concentrates on this acquired sign in a more refined way so that he becomes successively more skilled in modifying it at will. He modifies it in such a way as to produce in himself a maximum of disenchantment and detachment towards objects of sensuality and a deep feeling for the ultimate destiny of mortals.